Okay, hi everybody. This is going to be diabetes part two. And we are talking about, in particular, what causes diabetes. And we discussed that the main causes of diabetes, primarily a lipid disease due to saturated fat and also due to ingestion of fructose, which gets converted into fat within the body. And now we're going to go through some of the biochemical reactions that occur. So first of all, the saturated fat leads to overwhelming electron transport with too many electron carriers, in particular the FADH2s coming from beta oxidation that sort of overwhelm coenzyme Q in complex 3 of electron transport such that it reverses, starts producing superoxide anions. But the big thing for our uh, topic here today is how it causes a backup, first of Krebs cycle, also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle, but then it leads to a backup of glycolysis. And this here is glycolysis, and we're going to talk about the side reactions. Okay, so once you've got a backup of these glycolysis reactions, the most important one, this is the biggest point of this whole lecture here, is coming off 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde. It starts to uh, form diacyl glycerols. Diacyl acyl just means fatty acid. So you'll have glycerol, the typical, which is really like propane triol. Three carbons and then three hydroxyl groups coming off it, but now you'll have two fatty acids coming off it. So that's diacyl glycerol. And as the diacyl glycerol accumulates within the cytoplasm, it will then activate protein kinase C. And protein kinase C, you don't want that activated. Protein kinase C will subsequently block the passage of the glucose type 4 transporters up to the plasma cell membrane and that will be the main cause right there of insulin resistance. So this is what insulin resistance is all about. Saturated fat or saturated fat from fructose originally causing reverse of electron transport leading to a backup of Krebs cycle and glycolysis and then most importantly 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde accumulating and then you start to run these unwanted side pathways leading to accumulation of diacylglycerol, diacylglycerol activating protein kinase C, that blocking glucose type 4 transporters from going to the plasma cell membrane. Glucose type 4 uh, transporters are insulin dependent transporters characteristic of skeletal muscle in particular. Okay, And once they can't get up to the plasma cell membrane then the glucose will accumulate in the blood so that'll be hyperglycemia. In addition, protein kinase C's causes inhibition of endothelial nitric oxide and it decreases nitric oxide leading to vasoconstriction in your blood vessels which predisposes to hypertension as well as it increases endothelium. Endothelium increases platelet aggregation, the predisposition to clotting. So it's all bad. Your vessels are shrinking down and the tendency to clot in the blood is increased. Those are things you don't want. Okay. Um, it's all part of the whole microvascular disease picture that you get with diabetes. That's why diabetes, they get tons of amputations because they occlude their small arteries in their foot. And when you occlude the small arteries, there's nothing to bypass too distally. You know, a smoker gets aortoiliac disease, you can bypass the iliacs, okay? But you can't do much when the small vessels in the foot are blocked up. And unfortunately, this will block up small arteries in the eyes, diabetic retinopathy. And, um, in the kidneys, diabetic nephropathy. Some of the other side reactions that happen with this backup of glycolysis intermediates, 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde when it accumulates, it also leads to accumulation of MGO, methylglyoxyl. Methylglyoxyl will have a tendency to form these advanced glycation end products whereby it will bind to side chains of proteins like let's say lysine for example and it can cause these proteins to stick together. It changes their shape and once it changes their shape their function decreases. It can even uh, go out of the cell and lead to the formation of extracellular advanced glycation end products. Good name for it, age it because it ages you. Okay, And these can bind the receptors for advanced glycation end products. That will subsequently activate NADPH oxidase leading to reactive oxygen species, also activation of nuclear factor kappa B leading to inflammatory pathways. So what I'm basically saying is all of these things are bad. Diabetes is like a metabolic disaster. Okay, A lot of these diabetic patients think, oh I got it under control. Not really. <laughs> it's such a big deal and it's such a predisposition not only to myocardial infarction, stroke and Alzheimer's that a person really wants to get their diabetes reversed if possible, as quickly as possible before they lose their beta cells that produce insulin in the pancreas. Um, all right, here's some other side pathways. Fructose, and by the way, the best paper to read about all this stuff is the Banting Lecture of 2004 by Brownlee. Banting Lecture of 2004 by Brownlee. The entire paper is free online. It's the best paper ever written on the history of diabetes. I've read hundreds of them. That's by far the best paper ever. Okay, hexosamine, uh, hexosamine pathway predisposes to atherosclerosis. We're not going to talk much more about it. You're also going to run increased amounts of the pentose phosphate pathway. Not that important for our purposes today. That becomes more relevant in terms of cancer metabolism. Uh, glucose 
will also be diverted here into the sorbitol pathway, and that can cause osmotic stress in the cell with increased uh, sorbitol accumulating. And so that's basically the overview of the side reactions coming off glycolysis with insulin resistant. And the main point of this entire lecture was once the saturated fat, either de novo saturated fat from your diet or secondary to large amounts of fructose ingestion in the form of like say soda pop or energy drinks or something, um, leading to overwhelming electron transport within the mitochondria and a subsequent backup of Krebs cycle and glycolysis, then 3-phosphoglyceride, this is the big key point right here, 3-phosphoglyceride accumulation leading to side reactions to make an excessive amount of diacylglycerol activating protein kinase C, blocking the GLUT4 transporters. Okay, and once that happened, it's really a metabolic disaster because now the glucose can't get into the cell. Postprandially, meaning after you eat a meal, 80 to 90 percent of your glucose, let's just say 80 percent, should be going into the skeletal muscles that can be stored as glycogen. That's a good place for it. When the glucose can't get into the skeletal muscle, it stays in large amounts in the blood. That's called hyperglycemia. Now there's other cells in the body which are not dependent on glucose type 4 transporters. They're not insulin dependent for bringing in this extra glucose postprandial. And that would include your endothelial cells. Endothelia are the cells that line your arteries. And they will then in take up excessive amounts of glucose and that's toxic to those cells. In the same way that saturated fat gets into the skeletal muscle and damages electron transport. Excessive amounts of intracellular glucose, as occurs in the endothelial cells, also in some of the retinal cells, that's why you get diabetic retinopathy in some of the kidney cells, diabetic nephropathy in some of the peripheral nerves, uh, peripheral neuropathy associated with diabetes, those cells are not dependent on glucose type 4 transporters. And when there's hyperglycemia, they take an excessive amount. And initially things start out as inflammation. But over time you reach, you reach a turning point where it's no longer reversible. Inflammation over time eventually leads to fibrosis. Inflammation is often reversible. Fibrosis is not. And that's why, and in addition, there's an ongoing progressive accumulation of fat in the pancreas. Everybody knows about intramyocellular lipid causing insulin resistance in the skeletal muscle cells, and that being the main initiation problem. But you're also accumulating fat in the liver, fatty liver, which can progress from inflammation to fibrosis but you're also accumulating fat in the pancreas and the pancreatic uh, fatty atrophy itself with a loss of your beta cells, then the patient's much worse off because they can no longer make insulin and then it's no longer going to be reversal. You become in a situation similar to a type 1 diabetic who can't produce insulin. So anyways, there it is, insulin resistance and this mechanism for activating protein kinase C.